And so, and hey. so will, will we be able to get a copy of the recording too? Yeah, absolutely. So this there'll be a playback link. Um, so Thank we you. can share that. I'm going to take you through the different exercises that are going to be the most beneficial and also safe for you to do at home. You don't need any equipment. If you do have a sturdy chair, um, that could come in handy. Um, but again, I'll give you some options of things where you don't need to use any equipment at all. You're just going to use your body weight. I'm also going to give you options for beginners, intermediate and advanced. But most of the time, um, people who are advanced are going to do things that are a lot more technical. And so um, their technique and breath work needs to be really spot on. So I'll be flying through sort of the advanced levels. Um, and if anyone has any further questions about advanced, let me know. But this is really going to target the people who are starting out at home, uh, maybe going away on holidays and, and need a quick little routine to do while they're traveling. Um, and again, you don't need to take any equipment. You just need to use your body weight. We divide the body into usually three different parts. So we've got our upper body, we've got our front muscles and our back muscles, so our chest muscles and our back muscles. And then we've got the lower body where we've got our glute muscles and we've got our quadriceps, um, our calves and, and things like that. Now, even though the body is split up for different exercises, you're always working your core. Now, core is a whole different topic. So if you do need more information about engaging, how to actually engage your core muscles, then let me know and I'll send you a separate link about how to do that. But I will talk a little bit about engaging core uh, whilst we're doing the exercises. But it's really important to remember that the core should be working throughout Everything that you do, whether you're exercising, whether you're sitting in the chair right there now, you should be sitting up tall, engaging your core, whether you're going for a walk, whether you're, um, you know, cooking in the kitchen, whatever it is, you should be really engaging that core because that actually is what protects your back muscles. So if you're not using your core, then the back is taking a lot of pressure um, and you're not supporting your spine, you're not supporting your neck the way that you should. So learning to shoulders back, chest up, and engaging your core. Again, if you need more information on engagement, let me know. Let's start with our lower body because that's always the easiest one to get into and that will sort of warm you up a little bit as well. So if you do want to uh, participate in this while I'm going through it, that will actually give you the best opportunity to practice um, the tips that I'm giving you. Uh, those of you who are live, just give me a reaction if you can't hear me or if something happens and you lose me. But we're gonna start with the lower body squats. So the easiest way to learn to do a squat is by taking a seat and then standing up. So what you'll see here is that I'm not using my knees, which a lot of people will do a squat and their knees. Can you see how my knees come forward? We really want to avoid the knees coming forward. We want to sit back and we want to sit over our chair. And you can see that my knees barely even move from their position. But can you see how the knees stay above my heels? I'm just sitting back over that chair. Now that in itself might take a lot of practice. Once you're comfortable to do it without the chair, you can keep your knees in place, sit back like you're about to sit over the chair and then push up. Sitting back and pushing up. So again, you can see that my knees are not going forward. They're actually staying in place and my bum is going back. Now, a tip that I'll often use for the squat is imagine that you're trying to push the door of the car closed with your bottom. Push the car door closed. Push it back. So I know that that looks a bit funny, but that's the idea of that hip hinge that you want to do when you're doing a squat. So that is a basic squat, and that might take you a few weeks to perfect. It might even take you a few months, but it doesn't matter. As long as you keep working on it to perfect your technique to make sure that you're doing it safe, that's what matters. Now, to progress the squat, you can go slow and you can go low. So when you want to progress any exercise, we're going to go slower, 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 and lower. See how my chest is up, I'm not hunching over. Chest is up, core is engaged, and I push up slowly. Once again, slowly back, and slowly coming up. So that's the progression of getting deeper into the squat. To make it more challenging, you can grab anything in the room. I'm adding three kilos to my squat here. You can grab something heavier, whatever it is, challenge yourself. But again, 
You don't need any equipment. Trust me, doing 20 low squats is really going to make your legs work hard, right? So that's the basic squat that we can start with. Does anyone have any questions with that, those of you that are live, or can I move on to the next leg exercise? Feel free if there's anything that comes to mind. Beautiful. I'll move on. And if anything comes up after this video, you're always welcome to message me and, and um, shoot through any questions. The next exercise we're going to work on is a lunge. So the lunge is the exercise where you are stepping forward and down. That's a forward lunge. Back and down is a backward lunge. Side and down is a side lunge. Now, the, the reason a lunge is actually so important is because, look, every time I come and talk to you, I'm bending down. Every time you want to get down onto the floor and then get back up again, you're doing a lunge. Every time you need to get up the stairs, you're essentially doing a lunge, but it's elevated or down the stairs. So that split unilateral movement of the legs is a lunge. If you are just stationary on the spot, it looks like a lunge, but it's called a split squat. So I'll show you what that looks like. Stationary, up and down, is a split squat. Anytime you move, that's a lunge. So what I want to focus on with you is the safest version, which is a reverse lunge. So we're going to start with our feet together and we're going to take a big step back. Now, if you need to hold on to something to assist you with your balance, there's probably going to be a wall or a couch or a chair. So grab your hold. And we're going to take a big step back until that back knee is almost touching the ground. And again, stepping back. And again. So the focus is on my front leg. This leg is doing all the work. Stepping back. If you want to, you can pop down the towel, make it soft, and push up. So the more you can practice that move, the stronger those legs are going to be, the better you're working on your balance, you're working on a bit of coordination. And the reverse lunge is the safest way to protect your knee as opposed to stepping forward. Can you see how once again I don't put the knee over the toe? The knee stays above the ankle. Straight up and down. Straight up. Down. Any questions about the reverse lunge? Making sure that your chest is out, making sure that your core is engaged. We never want to be scratching in the neck. We want to take a big step. For some of you, you might start with a little step, not going as low, and then working up to that really big step where you're dropping down low. So you can really work the different levels there. And then again, if you want to get a bit stronger, you can add on holding on to something. You know, you can grab the nearest thing that weighs a couple of kilos and just hold on to that while you're doing your reverse lunge as well. So adding a little bit of resistance. Any questions with the lunge? So I have a question. So um, I do those, right? I do the reverse lunges and I do them with five pound weights. I used to do them with nothing. Now I do them with five pound weights, but I can't. I can't go down all the way and come back. So is it better to like not use the weights and try to like go down as far as you can and then do the weights later? Or is it to, I'm, I can't do what you do. I can't like put my knee all the way down <laughs> yeah. and back. Um, so I guess my question is, do you like, what, what's the importance of the weights versus like, you know, doing more with your back leg? And I, yeah. I talked to you about this by, email like i didn't know whether it was the front leg or the back leg and now i understand it's the front leg that works but yeah what about the weights do you think i should try and not use the weights and get better at it before i use the weights or what do you think using weights is always going to encourage strength building muscle improvement and growth you know for quality muscle but if you're not doing the full range of motion then you're missing out on some key elements of building that mu muscle to its full capacity 
you're only building strength to a certain point. So extending the muscle and stretching it out is going to allow you to be more mobile. So if you're limiting your movement, think about 10 years from now, you've limited your movement. If you focus now, Diana, on extending your range of motion, you'll have better mobility for longer in life. So whilst mm -hmm. it's great to challenge the muscles and to build them to be stronger, but if you're not actually moving them to their full range, they're, they're not going to be challenged uh, in, in an extension motion. So... Mm -hmm. Things like getting up and down, you will be limited. You might be strong to do, you might be strong to be able to go like this, but you're certainly not going to be able to do that if you don't work that. Mm -hmm. If you don't work the movement, it's not actually going to, it's not going to work. Do you know what I mean? For something to be right. functional. So my question is, do I like ditch the weights until I can put my knee down? I would. That's my question. Yeah, mm -hmm. I 100% would because you're going to mm -hmm. get a lot more out of it by stretching out the muscles and being more, more mobile, and then you can mm -hmm. add the weight later. But it'll be mm -hmm. very hard for you to improve on your flexibility and your range of motion if you're challenging yourself with the weights because you're probably thinking about the weights and, and holding onto them and staying balanced that you're not actually able mm -hmm. to stretch out and, and do the full range of motion. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's important to get the knee all the way down at yeah. some point. Yeah. I think with any exercise, your goal should be a full range of motion for mm -hmm. for any particular exercise. And I'll talk about that, especially with push-ups. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people who do push-ups um, not to the full range and they're missing out on so much uh, more muscle flexibility and growth and, and yeah. All right, so we'll talk about push-ups in a minute. Any other questions about the lunges? And you'll feel a big difference with your flexibility if you increase that range of motion. All of a sudden, your legs are going to be feeling much lighter because they've been stretched out so much. And it will be challenging. You know, really pushing your body to an uncomfortable position is challenging. But as long as there's no pain, there mm -hmm. might be discomfort because you're challenging your body, but there shouldn't be pain. If there's any pain, immediately stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to the, uh, the third lower body exercise which is glute bridges and for this one you need to lie down and glute bridges actually are the only exercise that fully target your glute muscles so when you're doing your squats your lunges they target your quads your glutes um, but this one will fully focus on your glute so we're going to lie down we're going to put our feet in line with our hips, hands down, engaging your core, pushing your heels down, and then pushing your bottom up. And a big, big squeeze at the top. That's the most important part, that big squeeze. What's the, the purpose of the heels down? So the purpose of the heels down, good question. When you place pressure into your heels, whether you're standing, whether you're sitting, it forces you to engage your glutes. If the weight is in the balls of your feet, chances are the weight's going to go into your knees. And if the weight is in your heels, then the weight goes into the glutes. So it's a really interesting experiment to try especially when you're lying down because it's a lot safer. You don't have to worry about balance. But play with where the weight is in your feet and feel the difference of which muscles get activated. When you push through your heels, you're activating all those posterior chain of muscles through the back of your leg. When you're forward in the balls of your feet, you're activating the front. So there's a really different uh, muscle activation. And we want to work our glutes because majority of the time people aren't using their glutes enough. And that's why, again, there's a lot of back issues because people have their weight through their knees and their, their body weight is forward. So everything's pulling them forward instead of up tall, using your glutes, activating those glutes, making sure that there's less pressure in the knees. When you're going up and down stairs, why do people's knees hurt? Because they're not using their glutes. All their weight is forward in their knees. 
Thank you. That You're makes welcome. A lot of sense. Thank you. And the other exercise, which I actually will find quite challenging to demonstrate for you right now, so I will send you a playback uh, link to a YouTube video. It's called the Wall Fit. Wall. Hold on to something. But basically, if you could see there, I was at 90 degrees with my knees. So pressing your back against the wall, dropping down, and again, putting that body weight in your heels so that you activate your glutes. So that's a really great way to work your lower body again, doing the wall sit. So I will send you a video, YouTube video link to, to practice that particular exercise. Um, and that one you just want to hold for as long as you possibly can. So squats, lunges, you're doing repetitions, as many repetitions as you can. But with the wall sit, you're trying to hold it. Some people can hold it for 10 seconds. Some people can hold it for 50 seconds. Um, and obviously, the lower you go, 90 degrees in your knees, the harder it's going to be. And that's a great safe way, something that you can do anywhere that has a wall. Uh, and that's a great way to challenge your lower body. So I will send the link for that. Any questions about that off the top of your head, let me know. But those are four lower body exercises for you. Squats, lunges, glute bridge, and wall sit. Really, really functional, great exercises are going to build lower body strength. All right. So let's move on to our chest. Um, so the front part of the body here, the most obvious chest exercise is a push-up. And a lot of people struggle with push-ups because we just don't practice them. We don't use those muscles very much. So a lot of people do struggle. So the first easiest way to work your chest is to use the wall. And if you do need a playback, let me know. I'll send you a YouTube video if you can't see. So it's a really simple way, feet together, slightly further back away from the wall to push off the wall. And you can see how those muscles get engaged as you push off the wall there. The next, um, I guess, uh, the next level, more intermediate, would be an incline push-up. So instead of being upright on the wall, you would then move to an incline position. Shadow stool. Um, a good way to do an incline push-up is to use the back of a couch. So usually something that's sort of mid-height, the back of the couch, you would put your hands on it, and then you would drop down and push up. So this is quite low, actually. Um, a couch, the back of the couch would be a lot higher. So you the cabinet would work. What's up? The cabinet behind you would work. Uh, absolutely. So level one, level two, level three. And then we move into level four, which is on the, on the floor. Now, there are two more levels that you can do on the floor. Uh, the easiest one is going to be in a tabletop position. Head down, push up. Head down, push up. So that, that's really, really easy for most people. To make it harder, we're going to change our hips. We drop our bum down, drop the chest and push up, drop the chest and push up. So you can see there that my body is flat. I'm not sinking through my back. I'm not dipping my back. I'm keeping my back flat. And this is where we talk about that full range of motion, Diana, where you want to make sure that you're getting all the way to the ground because otherwise you're only using half of the muscle ability. And you, you can't build on that very much. You want to be able to do a full range of motion. The next level up is obviously on your tippy toes. Um, but you can get a really good workout from the knee push-ups, that intermediate level of, of knee push-ups. Any questions with those? Core engagement um, again, is really important. Well, just like you said the knee push-ups is really easy for everybody. That's the one I do. So you me to do the wall push up but it, where I work out there's not really a good wall it's covered or it's you know so what about the, the tabletop is that just like worthless or do you think it's because I can't do a push up so I can't do the girly push up 
but I can do I can do the tabletops. I can do the wall, but the wall is inconvenient because you know, I don't have a good wall where I work out because it's. Uh, I think it's the best. Good. My suggestion for you specifically, Diana, would be the the uh, incline push-ups because you're not on your knees, but you are challenging yourself to get yeah, down. Yeah, that is hard, and I actually have. Yeah, that is hard. Yeah. It's it's hard, but then the next. The, the level before that is too easy and the level after mm -hmm. that is too hard. Mm -hmm. So if you can just get out of your head and try try and do two or three good ones and within a few weeks you'll be doing three or four good ones and in mm -hmm. six weeks you'll be doing six good ones. But take mm -hmm. the pressure off yourself for them to be, for you to do. A lot of people expect to do a lot. Don't mm -hmm. expect to do a lot. Just do three really good ones. Stop mm -hmm. and move on. Next time you come back, you'll try four really good ones. Mm -hmm. And you'll be so the surprised. Strength, it's interesting you said chest exercise because I always thought, so what strength, when you're actually doing a push-up, is it the strength in your arms or is it the strength in your chest? It's in your arms or all the way. Mm -hmm. Chest muscles are working into your mm -hmm. arms and your biceps. These muscles are small. These muscles aren't doing very much. Mm -hmm. They're holding you. But the real mm -hmm. muscle comes from the chest. Yeah, that's interesting. These are massive pec muscles and underneath what's going on here. There's big mm -hmm. pec muscles. So if you actually look at the, the body, the, the, the muscles, the, the pec muscles and the back muscles, the left, the titsimus dorsi, it's really big. Like they're our biggest muscles. And then our glutes are our next biggest muscles. And guess what? They're so small for, um, you know, this... Um, not generation, but we don't, we don't use them. So our bodies have completely started changing what they were meant, made for. Mm -hmm. You know, you think back to the day hunter-gatherers or, you know, they used to use their legs all the time to pick up fish, to get down, to kill animals, to go into the into the water, to get down, to carry things that were using their blood. Like, we don't do anything anymore. We sit on our bums and we don't use our legs. We mm -hmm. sit on chairs. You know, the Asian cultures, they all squat. They sit, they squat, they go to the bathroom, they're eating, they're squatting, they're squatting all the time. Right, so, they sit on the floor. I saw this this show called they Blue sleep Zone on the about floor. a 99-year-old woman who, she sits on the floor, so she's doing like, just getting up off the floor, she's doing like 100 squats a day. Or like Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Full mm -hmm. range of motion, always. Mm-hmm. Challenge yourself and, and you will get stronger. Yep. Um, the other one for your, not so much chest, but continuing on from the push-up position uh, to work into the arms and into the shoulders is a hand plank. So the hand plank, hands down, and you just come into a plank position here. Core is on, sucking that belly button in. You can stop and have a rest. Try again. Stop and have a rest. Try again. But the only way that you'll get better at that is by challenging yourself and trying it. So whilst you can do a, an elbow plank, which is very traditional to be on your elbows, if you want to work your arms and your hands, um, and we're talking about being in an environment where we don't have any equipment, we're using our bodies, hand plank is the best way to go. Mm -hmm. So again, keeping your core engaged, relaxing your neck and shoulders. And a hand plank is, is great. So again, you might start with three or four seconds. But the goal of you continuing and doing it week after week after week means that in six weeks' time, you'll, you'll be able to hold it for 10, 15 seconds. Yeah. The plank um, focuses on what muscles? Mainly your upper body here. So again, your arms. Not so much chest because you can see you're not actually moving your your chest muscles to work them but you're putting a lot of pressure through the arms so your biceps your triceps your shoulders um, and they're going to work and then again the core should be working so have a look if my core is not working if my core is working i'm fucking it in does that make sense Mm -hmm. you can you can feel it you can see it's it's i always think of a plank of wood for, for the core muscles 
you've got to think of a, a, a plank of wood. If that plank is not flat, your core's not working. Mm -hmm. yeah. So speaking of the core, um, the core incorporates abdominals, obliques, transverse abdominals, and back muscles. Yeah, so I'm sorry, explain the obliques again. I do the Pilates and they say obliques. I don't know what those are. They're, they're mm -hmm. muscles in here. Okay. Here, can you see the abdominals? Uh huh. The obliques are under here. Okay. And then behind here are transverse abdominus. So again, looking at, you know, if you, if you go into a, a muscle breakdown of the body, you'll see there's a whole lot of different layers. The abdominals at the front, the six pack, that's what everybody thinks of. But actually what's holding you up is that entire core frame. Mm -hmm. Lots of different muscles at the front and at the back. So we need to work mm. all of them. And the best way to work them is doing the plank on your elbows. Because that's going to, again, that's going to engage everything. Yeah? We don't want to be like that. We want to pull it up. Suck it in. And the next one is our Superman, um, our dead bugs. So we're going to drop one arm and one leg. And that's going to work the front and the back. And the last one, dedicated to our abs, chin tucked in, suck the belly in. Crunch, 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 crunch. And that will specifically work our abs. I could spend a lot more time going through all those ab exercises. Um, so maybe that's something that we can do another day on another Zoom. Uh, but hopefully that gives you an idea of those exercises that you can do at home. Um, you know, you could do your basic crunches with a twist as well to get into your transverse abdominus and the obliques, uh, but there's hundreds of different ways to work your abs and core as well. Lots of different ways to work your core, but those are the most common ones um, and the safest ones. So that um, dead bugs and plank on your elbows. Uh, the hardest muscle to work at home, which I didn't cover, is your back. It's very hard to work your back muscles you do sort of need to do some kind of pulling exercise. So if you don't have a TheraBand or if you don't have something that you can hang from, it is very hard to work your back muscles. Um, but, you know, if you are just wanting to learn basic exercises to kick off at home, there's that, that whole range is, is a great starting place for you. So hopefully that gives you some ideas, giving you some tips on how to perform them safely. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Um, and hopefully you'll practice them because consistency and practice is what's going to make, make the difference. Thanks so much, Karen. You're so welcome. Hope, hope it helps and I look forward to following up with you as well. I'll follow up, see how you go. Okay. All right. We'll have a lovely, lovely day. I'll stop the recording.